This video is sponsored by Grammarly, but more about them later in the video. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different ways of making money online. I just want to point out right now that this is not some like get rich quick scheme. There are no ways really of making money that is super easy and super fast. All of these ways are going to take effort and time. I took some inspiration from Ali Abdal's really great video on how to make money online, but I applied these to specific technical coding things and not necessarily online. I'm going to be evaluating all these different ways of making money coding with four different criteria. The the first one is how easy it is to get started. The second one is how hard it is to get to making $100 per month. The third one is how stable that stream of income is. And the fourth one is how passive that stream of income is. An assumption that I'm making here is that you are proficient in coding, where at least you can get yourself to a point in which you become proficient at coding so that you can start taking on these different coding projects to make money. I also highly encourage you to stay until the very end of this video because after we lay out all these different ways to make money from coding, we're going to do like a quick summary analysis analysis of it. And I will explain the combination of methods that I would use so that I can make money from coding quickly, but also build up more sustainable stream of income. So it's kind of two birds, one stone. You can make money more quickly, but then you can also slowly build that up so that you have greater amounts of income stream coming in from your coding projects. I really wish someone had told me this years ago. All right, let's get started. The first way that you can make money from coding is freelancing. Freelancing here just refers to you doing projects or a job for somebody and you're not an employee. These can include building a website, making an app, doing some sort of analysis for their product, which is more like data science specific and building up a data infrastructure, which is more data engineering specific. So how easy is it to start? I would rate this four out of five, pretty easy to start. The only thing that you need to do is actually find a client which is not as hard as you may think it is. There are at least three different proven ways. The first one is to list yourself on Upwork or Fiverr so people can reach out to you when they're looking for freelancers. The second one is to ask your friends or family if anybody's looking for someone to do their projects. Usually building a website or making an app or doing some sort of analysis is something that's pretty in demand. And the third one is something that I just personally realized, which is being active in online communities. Some of you guys may know Ibrahim um, from our Discord channel, who's all super active on study with Tina live streams and on the main channel as well. Well, Ibrahim told me that he was learning Django and just web development in general, right? And then he offered to make the website Scorebars with Tina, and he did this for free. And because he did such a good job on that, when I needed to make another website for something else I was doing, he was the first person that just popped into my mind, and I hired him to do it. So shout out to Ibrahim. I don't know how much of this was premediated, but if it were, very proud of you. All right, let's talk a little bit about today's sponsor, Grammarly. If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in how to use your technical and your coding skills in order to make some money. This of course means that you need to have an end client that's going to be giving you the money. And it's really important for you to be able to communicate effectively and concisely. Having a tool like Grammarly is super helpful and you don't need to stress out wondering if your coming off is sounding professional or not. And you can focus on other tasks. Grammarly is an all-in-one writing tool that is so much more than just a spell checker or a grammar checker. It allows you to clearly and effectively communicate your ideas through comprehensive feedback across different platforms. Grammarly has a free version with basic and grammar spelling suggestions. But but upgrading to Grammarly Premium will save you so much more time with their advanced features so you can feel confident that your writing is professional and effective. Grammarly is free to download and is really easy to integrate it into your everyday life. It works where you work, such as Gmail. It helps you save time, strike the right tone, and work more efficiently. For example, sometimes during your emails you want to sound assertive or you may want to sound professional. Grammarly Premium helps you adjust your tone to meet your needs. A recent experience that I had was I was trying to communicate with a brand and I kind of was, I wanted to like give off a professional tone right but the sentences that I was writing um, was not great I have a tendency of dropping what I think is called the article of a sentence and Grammarly was able to help me address these things and I came off far more professional get through those emails quicker and your work by keeping it concise confident and in the right tone with Grammarly go to grammarly.com slash Tina Huang to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly premium today to help you work more efficiently all right back to the video okay so how easy is it to make hundred dollars per month I would also say four out of five, pretty easy. If you take on one or two of these different gigs, um, you should be making $100 per month. I checked out Fiverr uh, just to see how much people are charging to make a website. And there's a range between $10 for a really simple website all the way up to over $1,000. If you're first starting out, you'll probably be charging like maybe $60, $65. And then as you get better, you can increase your rates. So not that hard to get started. How stable is the income stream? I would rate it three out of five. If you have a more in-demand skill like web development, for example, it shouldn't be that hard for you to keep getting contract jobs and as you build out more of your reputation people are going to start referring you to other people as well and how passive is this income stream 
it is one out of five because it is not passive. You kind of have to keep doing the contract jobs. Next thing that you can make money from coding is technical writing. This I'm referring to writing on GitHub, writing on Medium, maybe specifically towards data science and maybe Hacker Noon. There's like different variety of writing, but a lot of technical writing involves coding something and then writing about it. You could be writing for yourself and posting on different platforms. And as you gain a reputation, people may also reach out to you to do ghost writing or writing as a guest on other people's social medias. So how easy is it to get started? It's five out of five easy. You just have to make an account, something like Medium, and then you can immediately get started writing. Okay, so how easy it is to make $100 per month. I would rate this one out of five. It is not easy to make $100 per month. Um, it's gonna take a lot of time for you to build up your brand and each article that you write, say like on Medium, for example, you can check out these stats over here. Pretty much per day, you're making less than a dollar per article. Even though this is a really slow start and it's gonna take you a while, as you write more articles, the amount that you're earning per article builds up over time. Also, as you build out your brand, as I said earlier, people will start reaching out to you and doing sponsorships and also contract writing, which is gonna pay you a lot more. So how stable is this stream of income? Income. I would say in the beginning, it's like two out of five, and then it gets to around like three out of five. Um, and it's because in the beginning, like you're just writing articles and you haven't built up a brand yet. So it depends on like how well your articles do. But over time, since you have your past articles, there's like that continuous income stream. And then you can start booking gigs, uh, say like two gigs per month. And then that would also be like a more stable income stream for you. And how passive is it? I would rate it four out of five. After you write the articles, it's gonna keep making you money. The caveat here is that you do have to keep writing articles um, where else your brand kind of like fades off. And if you choose to take on these like freelance leads, then that in itself is active. Next way to make money from coding is tutoring. How easy it is to start. Four out of five, pretty easy to start. Only thing is that you have to find end clients. You can ask friends and family. Coding is such an in-demand skill these days. I'm sure that there's somebody you know, some kid um, of somebody you know that would like to learn how to code. You can also get a job at one of your local tutoring centers or post online. There's like online tutoring services. Also want to emphasize for anybody that has imposter syndrome, it's totally okay if you're not like super good at coding. Actually, it's better that you're only a couple steps ahead of the person it is that you're teaching. Um, and that's because if you're way too ahead then you don't really empathize with what they may be going through right now so how easy it is to make a hundred dollars per month in the u.s they were going by your average salary which is seven dollars and 25 cents you're probably not really going to get taxed for this so if you do a hundred divided by that then you get around 14 hours per month which is not that bad and if you go by the average hourly rate which is $15.63, then that gives you about like six to seven hours per month, which is really good. How stable is this income stream? I would rate this three out of five. Similar to freelancing, as you start doing more and more tutoring, people are actually gonna start coming to you. And as you gain more of a reputation, you can start holding classes for like more than one kid or like adult. It doesn't have to be a kid, just like to the person the person in which you are tutoring, like the 2T, I think. But say you're charging the average amount per hour and you have three people per class, then that's only two hours of your time to get $100 per month, which is quite good. And how passive is this income stream? I would rate this one out of five, not passive. You kind of have to keep tutoring people. Next way in which you can make money by coding is building templates or plugins. Here I'm talking about WordPress plugins and templates and things like e-commerce store, like Shopify plugins and templates. How easy it is to start. I would rate this three out of five. Um, it's harder to start than say like technical writing or your YouTube um, because you actually have to like build out a product, but it's not super hard to start if you're just building out a simple template play or plug it. How easy it is to make $100 per month. So I want to put this out here. I'm not the most knowledgeable about this. I've never built a plugin or a template and tried to sell it before. So do correct me if anybody in the comments. Um, so from what I've done in terms of research, I would rate this four out of five easy to make $100 per month. So the numbers that I got from different sites that are selling these plugins and templates, um, it kind of lists for $20 to $30 for WordPress templates. And usually they let you keep 70% of your revenue. And then there's this website called called Theme Forest, um, in which you get 55% of your revenue and Coachster, which lets you get 70% as well. So just taking these numbers and you do some quick math, that turns out to around five or seven sales per month, which at least in my opinion is not that many sales, but I may be wrong on this one. How stable is this income stream? 
I rate this three out of five. So it's it's not as unstable as something like technical writing, where it kind of depends on if people want to read your piece or not. So like the whim of your audience, um, but it's also like not completely stable because there's going to be fluctuations on depending on how popular things are. And it's also going to fluctuate depending on like other competition that's out there. How passive are plugins and templates? It's pretty great, five out of five passive, um, because after you make it, there's really not that much that you need to do except doing some updates or running some Facebook ads or Instagram ads to promote your product. Next way to make money from coding online is making a YouTube channel. You can have more like informative YouTube channels like mine, um, but you can also have more tutorial based and project based YouTube channels. So how easy it is to start? Five out of five easy, just need to make an account and just pick up a camera and start talking or coding. How easy is it to make $100 per month? Uh, one out of five really really hard i have a lot of personal experience about this generally if it's in the tech or coding niche you're probably making something like three dollars to seven dollars per a thousand views and most of the views that are coming in are not monetized it took me i think between four to six months to be making a hundred dollars per month how stable is this income stream i rate this two out of five uh similar to technical writing it depends on the whims of our viewers such as yourself um, but over time it does become better your past videos are going to be making income um, and you're making new videos that will be contributing towards that so i think it goes from like two out of five in the beginning and then three out of five afterwards and similar to technical writing again as you make more and more youtube videos and start building your brand out then sponsors are going to start reaching out to you to sponsor parts of your video and also to contract you to do videos for other channels and other social medias. How passive is this income stream? I rate this four out of five passive. You're going to be getting the money from the past videos that you've made, but you do need to be continuously producing videos where else your income will drop. And if you're taking sponsorships and contract jobs uh, from having that brand for your YouTube channel, that in itself is active. As an aside, if you ask any YouTuber, I almost guarantee that there's some sort of paranoia that you're going to get canceled. People don't like you anymore where your content is just like, I don't know, like not cool or something like that. Um, at least for me, like it's a very intense sense of paranoia. But from an objective point of view, it's a relatively stable uh, passive income stream. Next way to make money from coding is creating a course in which you're teaching someone how to build a project um, or how to code. How easy it is to start. I would rate this three out of five. I do have quite some experience in creating courses. I already did one, which is SQL for data science interview prep, which is linked in the description if you want to check it out. I did this in collaboration with three 65 data science um, who have made lots of data science courses already and I also started building up an audience by myself. Um, with that being said though it wasn't easy because I thought it would take me like one month to create that course. It ended up taking me like four months maybe like four to five months. It's because you really have to like think out the structure a lot more like what goes into each section um, and mine also involves someone else so it's like coordinating when that person is going to be there and then also like the different angles and like the different input streams etc etc like basically a lot of unanticipated work. How easy it is to make $100 per month. Um, I think if you have an audience where you're, if you're collaborating with someone like 365 Data Science, it's not too hard. I would rate this like three out of five. But if you're listing this on like Skillshare or Udemy yourself, I think it's like three to four out of five to make $100 per month. I can share some numbers with you. Um, for example, my course is listed on Udemy and I make two to three dollars per sale. So that means I have to make around 40 sales per month, which is like pretty hard actually <laughs> it's like it, that's not easy also another thing i want to point out is generally when you first release it there's going to be like a big bump so i got three thousand dollars for my first month but then after that it really like got a lot less because udemy doesn't promote it as much how stable is this income stream similar to templates and plugins there are going to be fluctuations um but it's not as fluctuating as something like YouTube or technical writing, where it's kind of on the whim of your audience. For example, for my course, I make something like $100 to $200 a month. How passive is making an online course? Five out of five passive. After you make the course, you just maybe have to do some updates, answer some questions, but that's about it. Next way to make money from coding is to create an app. This used to be like all the rage a few years back. I don't have too much experience in this, never created an app and then tried to sell it before. So I only know about this from just doing some research and kind of asking my friends who have done it before. How easy is it to start? I would rate this two out of five. Um, it's harder to do than a course or a template, I think, because you know, you have to like create the entire app itself. Although I guess you can like make a very simple app, but if you did that, it probably won't sell very well. So I don't know. So I think something like two to three 
out of five. How easy it is to make $100 per month. From the friends that I talked to, they were just like, I pretty much made like no money and it was like completely negative ROI to make the app. Um, but I also did some research and say you sell it for $3, which is actually like more expensive than most apps, uh, but just assume you sell it for $3. Apple will take 30% of that. Uh, and for Android, it used to be 30%, but then it dropped to 15% up to a million dollars. And assuming that you don't immediately earn a million dollars, so that's like 15%. And if you do the math on this for iOS, it's 48 sales per month. And for Android, it is 39 sales per month. I didn't know how hard this was. So I looked at some articles. People were saying that um, just from family and friends, they would get 20 to 30 downloads initially. But if you do like promotions um, on Facebook ads or Instagram ads, this person said that they were able to make $8,000 within the span of three months. So I feel like this is a more successful example, kind of like survival ship bias over here. So generally I would say like 39 sales per month uh, which you up to like 48 sales per month is pretty hard. So I would rate this as two out of five easy to make $100 per month. How stable is this income stream? Um, I would rate this like three out of five stable. It's gonna fluctuate depending on the popularity and what the trends are. And how passive is this income stream? Five out of five passive pretty great. You do the app, um, make sure to, that there's no bugs or you fix the bugs, do some updates. And that's about it. The next way to make money from coding is to get a job, a traditional job. How easy it is to start one out of five, very difficult to start. Just for reference for me, it took me 200 applications for me to land five interviews. And then finally, I was able to get two software engineering internship offers and for full time, one data science position and also one technical consulting position. And for the internship positions, it was like, like three to four rounds and for the full-time positions it was like seven rounds how easy it is to make a hundred dollars per month well once you get the job very easy um as long as you don't get fired you will make $100 per month, probably a lot more than $100 per month. How stable is this income stream? Very stable. Um, once you're there and you don't get fired, then you are fine. And how passive is this income stream? Um, very unpassive, one out of five. You kind of have to like keep showing up and doing things. So the last way to make money from coding is to become a CTO of a startup. So hear me out for a second here. It's not as wild as you may think it is. If you go on Reddit or something like that, you will see a lot of people looking for a technical person to become your CTO, provided they kind of just want you to build out their entire thing for them. You know, that's for free. That's probably why they want you as CTO, but like, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of people looking for CTOs. I actually do know a friend who didn't like respond to a Reddit post, but you know, technical person. And they're just like, you want to be CTO? And they're like, okay, I will be CTO. And it, it like worked out for him. Again, sample size of one. So probably not the best here. Okay. So how easy is it to start? I wanted to rate this like zero out of five, but there is that possibility, right? So like 0 0.5 out of five, it is very hard. Like it's not hard to respond to a Reddit post, but they have to like, like you, they're not trying to scam you. Just trying to get you to do something for free. And also in order to actually be a good CTO, you would need to have some experience in the technical field. How easy it is to make your first hundred dollars. I also rate this 0 0.5 out of, out of it is very hard um, to make your first $100 per month and sustain that because, you know, just getting that startup off the ground and just making money, most startups fail before they ever get to that stage. How stable is this income stream? Assuming that you actually manage to make it work and you're making money, I would say like three out of five. It depends on the type of your startup, of course, but usually you would have a relatively steady stream of customers and it's not gonna like just like suddenly disappear or something like that, but you still need to be like making adjustments and making sure that things are like not going to and things like that. So like three out of five. And how passive is the income stream? Two to three generally. Um, like you have to make sure that things are not failing, but over time it should become more passive because you know, you have that steady stream of customers. All right, since we've laid out each of these options one by one, let's kind of do a summary slash like analysis kind of thing. So for things like YouTube and technical writing, which is like producing content essentially, it's really easy to get started, very hard to make your first hundred dollars and it's not a stable source of income, but it is passive. And things like freelancing and tutoring, it's pretty easy to get started, pretty easy to make $100 per month. It has mid stability, but it is not passive. And for plugins and apps and courses, also like medium to a little bit low to make $100 per month. There's definitely a lot of outliers in this case if you're pretty good. It's also not like super stable, but more stable than things like technical writing and YouTube. And it's very, very passive, like the most passive. Then there's getting a job and becoming a CTO. So like getting a job is pretty interesting because it's very extreme. 
Um, it's very high effort to actually start, but once you manage to get in, it's like super easy to make $100 per month. Very, very stable, but it's absolutely not passive. And becoming CTO is like really high effort across the board and it's not like passive until you get to a certain stage as well. So after going through that summary, there may be a few observations that you've noticed, but I will also point out. First, there's an inverse correlation between how easy it is to start and how easy it is to make your first $100. This makes sense because the more easy it is to start, there's going to be more competition, lower barrier of entry, um, and therefore you're going to have a harder time trying to make $100. And another thing I want to point out is that this criteria is not exactly fair. Um, because we don't really factor in the potential for growth. Like if you just look at it, if you're becoming CTO of a company, it's absolutely horrible. Like it doesn't make sense for you to do this at all but it has a huge potential for growth. Also things that are content related, like technical writing or YouTube. I consider these like foundational ways um, of making money through coding. That's because these are low barriers of entry and therefore takes a long time to make $100 per month. However, it enables you to get passive income and it also opens up a lot of opportunities because once you have yourself out there, there's gonna be people coming to you for sponsorships, for branded work and freelance positions. Okay, so what is the combination of things that I would do to make money from coding? So firstly, I am a pretty conservative person, so I would probably get a full-time job just for that stable source of income. And then on the side, which is like what I'm doing right now for like the past year and a half, I would start something that we called foundational, um, something content related, like technical writing or YouTube. More specifically, I would be doing things like freelancing and producing courses. We're creating a template, we're a plugin, and I'll be producing content of me doing this kind of work. So you're, you're kind of like slowly building this foundational engine by producing content and building building up an audience and you're going to be making faster money by doing these freelancing jobs, these courses and these templates and plugins and things like that. So it really is like getting the best of both worlds here and kind of like double dipping with a snowballing effect. You're making money now and double dipping by producing content about it and building up your brand. Once you actually build out your template or product or app or something like that, now you have an audience that you can potentially sell it to. And the best part is as you create more content, people are going to start coming to you with different freelance projects and like different things that you could be interested in doing. This is what my friend Seattle Data Guy is doing for data engineering and Jake Amaral, who's doing this for trading bots. They make content, people come to them and then they take on these freelance jobs. So yeah, that is what I would do if I were to start over. I really wish someone had told me this years ago. And that's it. We have come to the end of this video. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. Um, comment below which one you find the most interesting to you and what combination you think you would like to do the most. I would love to get your thoughts on this. Um, and that's it. Yeah, I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.